Let's start with testing your attention to detail a bit. Take a look at two friends, Ariana and Brooke. Can you tell which one of them is richer? It must be Ariana. Look, she has an original Louis Vuitton purse. Cameron and Dean went fishing on a lake in the middle of winter. Here are photos of them. Cameron is posing with just a little bit of clothing when it's freezing cold, and Dean is posing with a big fish he caught. Which one of them is less smart? It's Dean. Look, the ice on the lake is cracking. It's dangerous to stay there. Everly and Jasmine are in a hurry to get to work. They're running late. Everly is going her usual way, and Jasmine has taken a shortcut. Which one of them is in danger? Jasmine, look, she's walking close to some buildings. There are icicles hanging there. It's very dangerous to walk under them. Noel and Nash are walking outside. Which one of them is in danger? It's Noel. Even though Nash is blind, he has a stick and he'll know that there is a hole. Noel might not notice this because she's too focused on her phone. For her wedding anniversary, Charlotte received a diamond necklace. Next evening, she was having dinner with her friends and showed the necklace to them. She let them look at it and left for the bathroom. When she returned, the necklace wasn't there. Her oh, friends no. told her that she had taken it with her. Take a look at the pictures before and after and tell where the necklace is. Look at the glass of juice of this woman. Seems like there's more juice in the second picture, but it's not true. She just put the diamond necklace in the glass and the juice level rose. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. She came across a witch's house and asked her to take her home. The witch agreed on one condition. <laughs> there were three cards. Two of them said stay and one of them stated free. They were facing down and Esme didn't know which one was where. If she picked the free one, she would go home. Otherwise, she'd have to stay with the witch. There was a hint. One stay card wasn't in the middle. The second stay card wasn't next to the other one. Which one should Esme pick? If one stay isn't in the middle, it's either on the left or on the right. Otherwise, if the other one can't be next to it, then it's definitely not in the middle, but on the other side. So, Esme should pick the middle card. It must be the free pass. Ava needed to sneak into her mom's computer to delete an email she had accidentally forwarded to her, but the account required a password she didn't know. Uh -oh. Luckily, there was a hint, and here's what it said. What do you think the password is? The second number is the number you get if you multiply the digits the first one consists of. 3 times 5 is 15. 2 times 8 is 16. 4 times 5 is 20. Similarly, 4 times 9 is 36. And 7 times 8 is 56. So, the password must be 3656. Gianna owns a factory producing cars. Three workers can assemble three cars in three days. How many cars can one worker assemble in one day? If three workers assemble three cars in three days, then one worker assembles one car in three days. So, in one day, a worker assembles one-third of a car. Eloise woke up in a dark dungeon with only some torches lighting it up. There was a door, but it was locked. There was a panel with buttons of different colors and a plate with the word GROW written on it. How can Eloise get out?
The word is the hint, and the letter it consists of are the first letters of the colors of the buttons Eloise has to press, in respective order. Which are green for G, red for R, orange for O, and white for W. Miel likes everything to be in perfect order. Her room is very organized, and even her collection of numbered marbles is sorted into three boxes. In the first box, there are marbles with numbers 1, 2, and 7. In the second box, there are marbles numbered 1, 4, and 5. Two marbles in the last box have numbers 6 and 3 on them. What's the number on the last marble in the last box? The sum of numbers on marbles in each box is 10, so the number on the last marble should be 1. Ashley arrived on a remote Greek island to spend her getaway vacation alone. All the locals there tell the truth and all the tourists always lie. Two girls approached her, and one of them said, Hey, I'm Paige. I'm a tourist here. And this is Sophia. She's from here. Can you tell if either of the girls is a local or a tourist? Since locals always tell the truth, a local would never call themselves a tourist. So, Paige must be a tourist, which means that she's lying about Sophia being a local. So, Sophia is a tourist too. Calliope is a queen of a remote island country that no one has ever heard of and that isn't on any maps. She wanted to make sure that there are more girls being born in her country, so she passed a new law. Every family should give birth to their descendants until they have a daughter. After they have a daughter, they can't have any more descendants. With this law, what will be the ratio of men and women in the country after many years and generations pass? With every birth, there's a 50-50 chance of having a boy or a girl. So, it doesn't matter how many are born in any family the ratio will always stay more or less one to one. This law will only ensure that there's at least one girl in every family. Hannah found her old necklace which is now broken into five short chains, having four gold links each. She took it to a jeweler asking him to fix it. The jeweler said the cost of repairing it is $10 for every link he needs to open and reseal. So, since he will break a link in each chain, it will cost $50 to repair it. Is there a better way to do it that will cost Hannah less money? A more efficient way is to break the four links in one of the pieces and use each to seal the remaining four chain pieces with them. This way, it will only cost Hannah $40 to repair it. Okay, now let's take a little break and have fun. I'll show you some emojis, and your task is to guess which movie they describe. Here's the first set for you. What do you think? Yes, that's The Lion King, of course. Nothing hard. Here's the next one. Any ideas? Beauty and the Beast, another Disney classic. This one is my personal favorite. Have you seen it? It's Up, a must-watch animated movie. Let's try something newer. Can you recognize this one? This is Encanto. Moving on from the animation a bit, what is this movie? I bet you know it. It's Alvin and the Chipmunks, a movie about singing chipmunks. You turn right and immediately bump into a huge guard. Your heart skips a beat and you get paralyzed with fear. To your surprise, the guard looks down at you and asks, Want to pass? Speechless, you just nod. 
Okay. You see, no one here wants to play riddles with me. If you solve one of my riddles, I'll let you go and won't tell anyone I've seen you. Deal? You nod again, and here comes your riddle. What is that invention that lets you see right through walls? That's a window, of course. The guard smiles and says, Beware of the vampires. Then he moves aside, letting you go. Wow, that was close. And vampires? This gives you chills. But you have to keep moving and get out. And again, another door that requires a passcode. Can you crack it? There's a hint again. You should continue the sequence. O-T-T-F-F-S-S-E-N-T Each of these letters is the first letter of the numbers. O for 1, T for 2, T for 3, then 4, 5, and so on. The last stands for 10, so the next four are E, T, T, F. 11, 12, 13, and 14. Yep, that's correct. The door clicks open. Move! You get into a huge dark room. All the light comes from the candles the room is filled with. The problem is that there are four ways, and again, you don't know which one to take. Suddenly, each of the doors opens and four people walk into the room. There are two men, one woman, and one teenage girl. They all say they're prisoners, too, and the other three are vampires. Who do you trust? You should trust the second man. He's the only one who casts a shadow from the light of the candles. The other three don't, so they must be vampires. So you rush to the man and you shut the door behind yourself. It'll probably slow them down for a while. As you're running, the man tells you he's been here for at least three days. The next obstacle is something he couldn't solve by himself, so he couldn't get out. There's just one try, and if you fail, the exit gets blocked for 24 hours. Finally, you come across another door with a robot guarding it. To let you go, the robot needs you to say the password. The tricky thing is that the password is different each time. The man said that as he was hiding in the room, he saw the vampires passing it twice. The first time, the robot said 12, and the vampire said 6. The other time, the robot said 6, and the vampire said 3. When the man approached the robot the last time, the robot said 8. The man replied 4, but the robot didn't let him in. The door got blocked, so it wasn't the right answer. You nod and approach the robot. The robot says 4. What is your answer? The answer is 4. The rule isn't dividing the number by 2 but saying the number of letters in the word. Your answer is accepted. The robot opens the door and lets you go. Again, another dark room. But as you step into it, you get surrounded by eight hungry dogs. In the middle, there's a meat cake standing so high on the table that the dogs can't reach it. To calm them down and make them your friends before they make you their dinner, you have to feed them the cake. But here's a tricky thing. The knife is magical and can only make three cuts. After three cuts, it disappears. Your task is to divide the cake into eight equal pieces with these three cuts. How can you manage that? With one cut, you cut the cake in half and get two pieces. Then you make another perpendicular cut and get four pieces. With your last move, you have to cut the cake in the middle horizontally, splitting each of the four pieces into two at once. (laughs) Great job! The worried wife. Jason got into a car accident and lost his memory. When he came around in his hospital room, he saw three young women near his bed. But the man couldn't remember who they were. Each of them claimed to be his wife. The doctor told them Jason had to stay in the hospital for at least one more week. Sweetheart, what am I supposed to do if you never remember me? 
The woman on the left was sobbing bitterly. Honey, I'm so worried. Let's go home. I don't like it here. I'll take better care of you at home. The one in the middle exclaimed. The girl on the right was furious. They're trying to steal you from me. Let's leave this place right away. Which lady is the man's wife? She's the one on the left. She's the only one who's worried. The other two want to take Jason away from the hospital, but he's injured and needs medical care. The Inheritance Jim's uncle Archibald was a wealthy man who loved playing pranks on his relatives. That's why, when he passed away, no one could find his will. But one day, a few years later, Jim was looking through some old papers. Suddenly, his breath caught in his throat. The document he was holding was his uncle's will. It read, I hid all my money and other valuables at 3 p.m. sharp under my favorite cherry tree, right where its shadow ends. The one who digs it out will be my heir. Jim was beyond happy. He was going to be wealthy. He drove to his uncle's posh villa and found the cherry tree. He waited till 3 p.m. and started to dig. But try as he might, his efforts didn't pay off. Confused and upset, he had to return home. Why didn't he find anything? It's been several years since Jim's uncle hid his valuables. The tree has grown taller, and its shadow has become longer, too. Who's poor? These two girls are putting on their makeup and getting ready to go out and have fun. They're using pretty much the same things. Lipsticks, cosmetics, clothes. Their phones look similar, too. But one of these girls is poor. Who is it? Take a closer look at the girl on the left. Her phone gives her away. It's an obvious knockoff. But then again, she saves some money. She won't be poor for long. Who is it? Mark and Liza had been dating for two years. One day, the guy came to his girlfriend's house. He was going to propose to her. But when he made it there, he found Liza with another man. Mark was furious. The other guy got scared and rushed out of the house. Liza was shouting it was her brother, but Mark knew better. Unfortunately, he hadn't seen the guy's face clearly. When he ran outside, he saw three men. Which one is Liza's lover? It's the guy on the left. It's freezing outside. And the other two guys have red cheeks and noses. But the third guy's face is pale because he just left a warm house. A weird choice. Every day, Mark rides his bike to the railway station to get to the college. There are two stops near his home. One is a mile away from his house and the other two miles away in the opposite direction. In the morning, he always gets on the train at the first stop. And in the afternoon, he gets off at the second. Why? Mark's home and the stations are on the hill. And this method allows the guy to ride his bike down without any effort. A money problem. A notorious criminal caught rich businessman Brian and locked him in a room. I won't let you go until you double the money I leave for you. And the criminal put $5,000 on the table. By the time he returned, Brian had already doubled the money. He hadn't left the room or communicated with anyone. Then how did he do it? He put the money in front of the mirror. A realization. Three friends fell asleep under a tree in the countryside. While they were resting, a boy painted mustaches on their faces. 
Once the men woke up, they started to laugh. But then, all of a sudden, they stopped. Why? At first, they saw the mustaches on their friends' faces and found it funny. But then, they realized their friends were laughing too. It meant they had mustaches on their faces as well. Jessie is a mom of three who works as a detective. She comes home late one night and goes right into the kitchen to get dinner ready. Waiting for her in there, a huge mess. Looks like someone already had their dinner. A chocolate pasta sandwich. She doesn't let her kids eat that kind of stuff. So she goes upstairs and rounds up all her kids. Katie, Serena, and Hannah are all busy doing their homework. They all deny eating chocolate pasta, but she still knows who it was. Who's lying? And how did Jesse know? Back in the kitchen, the knife's on the right-hand side of the chocolate pasta. That means the person who made the sandwich is left-handed. She has only one left-handed kid, and that's Hannah. You get lost in the forest, and you end up wandering around the whole day. Finally, at sunset, you come across a small and spooky house. Looks like a witch lives there. You have no other choice, so you go in and ask her to show you the way out of this crazy forest. The witch agrees, but on one condition. You have to play a game. If you answer correctly, she lets you go. If you make a mistake, you have to stay with her forever. Mm. Here's the question. You have something that's yours. You barely use it, but others use it a lot. What is it? It's your name. You're abroad, enjoying the sun and a much-needed vacation. One day at the beach, you meet a beautiful woman and spend the whole day with her. In the evening, you ask her if you can meet again tomorrow. She smiles and says, yes, if you can guess where she comes from. But she really likes you, so she gives you a hint. The place I'm from is two of Armenia, one of Germany, two of England, one of Turkey, two of India, and one of Australia. Can you guess where she's from? Two of Armenia means you have to take the first two letters of the name Armenia, A-R. The rest are the same. One of Germany is G, two of England is E-N, one of Turkey is T, I-N from India, and A from Australia. Together, they make Argentina. That was a lot of work. She better be worth it. You're wandering in a different forest, and you come across a picnic. They're all witches. You try to hide before they notice you, but uh uh-oh. What do they want? Actually, they're pretty chill. They just need a little help. There are eight of them, and one of them celebrating her 999th birthday. They've got a birthday cake, but there's a problem. And no, it's not that there's too many candles and too little cake. Their magic knife can only make three cuts, and they can't figure out how to cut the cake into eight pieces. Can you figure it out? First, cut the cake in half. Then make another cut so there are four equal pieces. Now cut the cake sideways through the middle so it has two layers. Now everybody gets a piece. Helena finally got herself a new guitar. She wanted to play it right away, but she had school. She locked it in her room and left. When she got home that evening, the guitar was gone. Her family was kind of fun. They were always pulling pranks on each other. She asked everyone about her guitar. Here's what they said. Her mom said she hadn't even seen the guitar. Her dad said he saw it when he walked past her room, but then he didn't go in because he had a lot of work to do. Her brother said he was at home, but spent the whole day downstairs. Helena solved the mystery instantly. Can you figure it out?
Her dad's lying. He said he saw the guitar while walking past her room. Her but third. that would be impossible. She locked the door on her way out. Mrs. Miller left the house and put a $100 bill in the dining room for her son. But the son said he never saw the money. There were three other people in the house that morning. Stephen, the gardener, Bill, the cook, and Molly, the housemaid. Steve said he saw the money, but he's an honest man. He'd never take it. Bill said he spent the morning in the kitchen and didn't see the money at all. Molly said she had to open the kitchen window, but didn't want the bill to fly away. So she put it in this book, between pages 35 and 36. Can you tell who's lying? Molly is. She couldn't have put the money between pages 35 and 36. They're two sides of the same page. Kevin's a single father of four. He was working late one evening and got a call from a neighbor. The neighbor just saw one of his daughters walking around with her friends in a totally different neighborhood. It was dark, so the neighbor couldn't tell which daughter it was. When Kevin came back home, he asked his daughters which one of them was out after dark. Lily said she was reading all evening. Madison said she was playing Uno. Riley said she was in the backyard in the pool. Ava said she was talking to a friend in her room. Kevin immediately knew who was lying. Do you? It was Madison. She couldn't have been playing Uno by herself. She's hiding something. If it's raining at midnight, can you expect that in 72 hours it'll be sunny? Nope, in 72 hours, it's going to be night again. In the room, there are two people, both of them sitting. But if one of them stands up, they won't be able to take the other one's place whatever they do. How is that possible? The second person is sitting on the first one's lap. A father tells his teenage daughter, You arrived very late at 3 a.m. and made us all worry a lot. I don't want this situation to repeat. His daughter, though, replies that it will never happen again. How can she be so sure? The father was talking about the birth of his daughter. An art expert paid big money at an auction for a painting that he knew didn't cost anything. He was an honest man and didn't have any criminal intentions. Why did he buy this picture? Although the painting cost nothing, its frame was a beautiful and expensive piece of art. A street food vendor has a sign on his stall saying, One hot dog, one and a half dollars. Three hot dogs, five dollars. He knows it's more expensive to buy three, but doesn't change his sign. Why? Each time a customer saw his sign, they would buy one hot dog, then another, and then a third one totaling up to $4.50. Thus, everyone's happy. The customers think they're clever, and the vendor gets his sales up. During a fire, a bank was robbed. The security guard told the police that he wanted to save a bag of money, but he had to crouch to tie his boot just in front of the emergency exit. At that moment, the door opened and hit him on the head. When he came to, the hmm? money was missing. Why was the security guard arrested? Well, all emergency doors open outwards. You find yourself in a photo gallery. After looking at the wall, you realize that one of the pictures doesn't belong to the rest. You see a raccoon, a llama, a football, and a balloon. Can you tell which is the odd one out?
It's the llama picture. The other three objects have two double letters in their names, but the llama only has one double. There's a barrel of water in the yard. You look inside and say that it's more than half full, but your friend argues that it's less than half full. How to figure out who's right without using any measuring tools or removing water from the barrel? Tilt the barrel so that the water touches the rim. If you can see the bottom, the barrel's less than half full. If the bottom is still covered with water, it's more. Sam and his brother John were always fighting. Their mother couldn't take it anymore and came up with a clever plan to stop them. She told the boys to stand on the same piece of paper in such a way that they didn't touch each other, and it worked. The boys couldn't fight anymore. How did she do it? The woman slipped the paper under a closed door and made Sam stand on one side and John on the other. There is a bridge that is one mile long. It can hold only 5,000 pounds at one time. That's exactly the weight of the truck that's crossing it. The truck reaches the middle of the bridge and stops. Suddenly, a bird lands on the truck. Is the bridge going to collapse? The bridge isn't going to break down, because the truck has already used some gas to get to the middle, and therefore weighs less than 5,000 pounds. A young woman is sitting near the window. At first, she's deep in thought. Then, she suddenly decides to throw something out of the window. A couple minutes later, she drops on the floor unconscious. She's perfectly healthy and isn't prone to sudden faints. There was no one outside to have hit her either. So, what happened? She was knocked out by the very same thing she'd thrown out the window. It was a boomerang that came back and hit her on the head. Well, that was a dumb thing to do. Two men are in a room facing each other. One of the men is a psychic and can see into the future. He predicts that in 10 minutes, the other man will be hit on the back of his head. Of course, shocked and paranoid, the other man can't stop staring at the clock on the wall. And exactly 10 minutes later, he's lying face down on the floor. How could it happen? After 10 minutes, the man turned around to see if there was anyone behind him. At exactly that moment, the psychic hit him on the back of his skull. Well, I'm starting to think he wasn't a psychic after all. Three friends, Blair, Chloe, and Nell, were walking all day around town. They found a beautiful but dusty house where no one lived. They entered it and started to take pictures. In the evening, they were scrolling through the pictures and one of them made a scream. Take a look at the photos and say which one scared them and why. It's the first picture. There was no one in the house except for the girls. But on that picture, they're all three of them together, snapped from behind. Michelle was having a birthday party. She noticed her brother was eating in his room with some girl. However, she didn't know who it was. She got very curious, so after they left, she sneaked into his room to find some hints. There were three girls at her party, Jasmine, Sydney, and Nicole. Michelle immediately guessed who her brother was dating. Can you? Her brother was dating Jasmine. Look at the dishes in the cutlery. There's a lipstick stain on the fork. Jasmine is the only one wearing lipstick. Pamela is a lawyer, and Samantha is a journalist. Can you guess which one of these women is a mother? Take a look at the background. On the wall behind Samantha, there's some colorful marker scribbles. She must be a mother. 
Gianna was getting ready for her date. Suddenly, the lights in her apartment went off. She was almost ready and only needed her gloves. It was dark and she couldn't find a fitted pair. She only had gloves of two colors, brown and black. She was already late, so she decided to leave, taking several gloves with her. How many gloves should she take with her to be sure there's a pair of the same color? She just needs three. Even if the first two are of a different color, the third one will either be black or brown, matching the other one. A police officer was following a robber around the city. Suddenly, the robber entered the hospital and disappeared. When the police officer entered the building, there were three workers. One of them must be a robber who dressed up to pretend to be a doctor. Can you tell who? It's the man in the middle. Look at his badge. There's a picture of a woman on it. He must have worn the first pair of clothes he noticed. It was Christmas morning, and the whole family was home. When Bailey returned in her room after watching her show on TV, she found that someone stole all the presents she had been wrapping. She questioned every person in the house. Her mom said that she had been making dinner. Her dad said he had been mowing the lawn. Her brother said he had been playing video games in his room. Who stole the presents? It was Bailey's dad. It's winter, and we could see that it's snowing outside. He just couldn't mow the lawn. In the arts museum, the lights went off for a couple of minutes. When they came back on, the most expensive painting was missing. The detective arrived and started the investigation. There were three suspects, and he questioned each of them. Jessica, a dance teacher, said that she had been so scared when the lights went off that she couldn't even move and for sure didn't touch anything. Derek, a journalist, said he'd been in the bathroom at the time. Collins, an engineer, said he had been in a different room of the museum, watching the dinosaur fossil. Who's lying? It's Collins. It's an art museum. There are no dinosaur exhibitions. Can you tell who's not a real werewolf? It's actually the guy who looks like a werewolf. Werewolves only turn into wolves during the time of the full moon and at night. It's daytime now, so the guy must be just wearing a costume. Esme was having a walk in the forest. After the dawn, she tried to find her way back home, but got lost. Finally, she came across a witch's house and asked her to take her home. The witch agreed to help her, but only if Esme solved her riddle. If not, she'd have to stay with the witch forever. The witch took an apple, tied a string to it, and held it. She asked Esme to cut the string in half so that the apple didn't fall down. However, Esme couldn't touch the apple or hold it. How could she do it? Esme should tie a knot in the middle of the string, make it into a loop, and then cut the apple. A member of an expedition to the South Pole found himself in a frozen cave. He didn't remember what had happened, but he knew he had to get out. The man saw three doors and a note saying what was behind each of them. Behind the first door, there was a hungry polar bear. Behind the second door, there was a room filled with poisonous gas. And behind the third, there was a room with sharp icicles falling from the ceiling every second. Which door should the man choose to survive? He should pick the first door. He's at the South Pole. There are no polar bears there. After classes, Nora stayed at the university. She needed to finish her project. She was sitting in the hallway. Soon, she got hungry. The girl went to grab some food and left all her stuff behind. 
when Nora returned, she checked her things and called the police. She told them what had happened and reported her wallet stolen. There were three other students nearby. All of them were questioned. Kennedy said she had been texting her friends. Ethan said, I did sit close to Nora for a while, but I didn't see or touch her wallet. Gabriella said she had been in the classroom and just walked out a couple minutes before. The detective listened to them and left without arresting anyone. Why? The detective remembered that Nora had gone to get some food. It means the wallet was with her and couldn't be stolen. The girl lied. <laughs> Three women, Sarah, Mila, and Eleanor, went shopping. Two of them are pregnant, and one is a professional watermelon thief. Yeah, I know, but just humor me. Can you tell which one stole the watermelon? It's Mila. She's wearing heels. It's not the kind of shoes pregnant women would wear. Aurora was spending her summer in the countryside. She often took long walks in the forest alone. One day, she saw a huge mansion. It was obvious no one lived there, so she entered the house. It was dusty inside, but still beautiful. Aurora took some pictures and left the place. When the girl came back home, she looked through her photos. She wanted to pick the best ones to post on her social media. But then she saw one of the photos and screamed. Take a careful look at this photo. Can you see what scared her so much? Aurora noticed she, herself, was in the photo. But it's impossible. She was alone in the house. Stella and Adeline were sisters. Their grandmother once presented Adeline a bracelet. But both girls loved this piece of jewelry very much. So sometimes, Stella snuck into her sister's room and borrowed the bracelet. One day, Adeline came home and noticed the bracelet was gone. She knocked on her sister's door. Stella opened the door, realized it was her sister, and shut it again. In a couple of minutes, Adeline managed to break into the room. She started searching for the bracelet. Stella told her that this time, she hadn't taken Adeline's jewelry. Adeline didn't find anything and had to leave. But on her way out, she remembered something and managed to get her bracelet back. Where was it? When Stella opened the door, she had her hair down. But later, she already had her hair tied up. In those few minutes, she made a bun and hid the bracelet in her hair. On a rainy summer night, Mrs. Miller came home after work. Her neighbor, Mrs. Smith, visited her. The women wanted to have some tea together. Mrs. Smith said her daughter was at a party. She met one of Mrs. Miller's triplet sons there. Mrs. Miller asked which one it was, but her friend didn't know. Her daughter could never tell the guys apart. The problem was all three of them were grounded and weren't allowed to go out until the next week. Mrs. Miller wanted to find out who had broken the rules. She called the boys and asked how they'd spent the day. Ian, the artist, said, In the evening, I was outside drawing. Ryan, the musician, said, I spent all day inside writing a new song. Luke, who likes sports, said, I did a workout and spent the rest of the day reading. Mrs. Miller understood which of her sons was lying and grounded him for another month. Who's the liar and how did she know? Ian lied. He said he had been drawing outside, but it was raining. Two best friends, Emily and Luna, came to a popular and expensive hair salon. At first, the administrator told the girls they had just one available hairstylist. But after making a phone call, she happily announced she had found another hairdresser. Emily and Luna could have their hair done at the same time. But in the process, it dawned on the girls that one of the hairstylists was fake. Which one?
hairstylists are using regular scissors, but instead of hairspray, the one on the left is holding a can of bug spray. Yeah, that's a big clue right there. Mary and her younger brother Alex were mushroom hunting in the forest. They started to quarrel. So Alex got angry and ran away. After several minutes, Mary rushed after him. She was still fuming but also worried. Soon, the girl reached a small river. A man was sitting on the shore. Did you see a teenager here? Mary asked. Yep, he's just taken a boat and made it to the other side. But Mary didn't believe the man. Why? The boat is indeed on the other side, but the paddles are lying next to the man. How could the boy cross the river without them? Three prisoners are sitting at a table having dinner, but one of them is wealthy. Can you guess who it is? It's not the guy with the steak and shrimps. The little tag on his shirt reveals he's a chef, and he likes to prepare a special treat for himself. The guy with the jewels shows that he's well off, but in prison, jewelry is basically worthless. It's the third guy. Wealthy people try to keep a low profile in prison, not to be targeted by others. That's why he doesn't flash any valuable possessions or his status. It's Friday and all the students have gathered in a big lecture hall to take the end of term exam. The teacher has been informed that one student is going to cheat. Can you tell which one? Pay attention to every detail. It's student C. It looks as if he's trying to remember what he's read, but he has all the answers written on his hand. Marta was walking through the park near her home in the evening. It was dark and there was nobody around. Suddenly, someone grabbed her from behind and they bolted away. Marta oh no. took off after them. She was pretty sure this person was a woman, but she couldn't make out her appearance or clothes. When Marta ran inside, she saw three teachers. The girl looked at them attentively and soon figured out which one of them had taken her bag. Can you do the same? The woman in the middle wouldn't be able to run away with a cast on her leg. The one on the right doesn't have anything in her hands. Where would she hide Marta's bag so quickly? But the woman on the left has a big shopper bag on her shoulder. A real teacher wouldn't need to carry it in the classroom. So she was definitely the one who took the bag. Jonathan sneaked out of the house late in the evening to meet his girlfriend. The teenager thought he was extremely careful and quiet, but his whole family knew about his plan. They were aware the guy would return at midnight, so they decided to make a bet. The one who would see Nathan first when the guy started climbing the fence would be the winner. The prize would be no chores for them for one week. So as to not fall asleep, Nathan's dad switched on the TV. The teen's grandfather settled in the living room to read a book. The grandmother went to the kitchen to make a pizza, and Nathan's mom went to her room, sat down on the floor, and started to meditate. Who's going to be the first to spot Nathan when the time comes? Nathan's mom. Her eyes will be used to the darkness, and she will see better than the others. Look at this picture closely and try to figure out who's from the future. Well, I'm pretty sure there was no flashlights in the Stone Age, so it has to be this guy here. Down in the Sea Kingdom, Stacy met Neptune. He was sitting on his throne, surrounded by three mermaids. Neptune asked Stacy to return the pearl necklace to his wife, who had recently lost it. Luke happened to have found the necklace on the shore. Can you guess which mermaid is Neptune's wife, so Luke can give it back to her? It's the third one. She's the only one who's wearing an engagement ring. Lisa was a famous top model. She was found unconscious in her dressing room during a photo shoot and taken to a hospital. Doctors said she had a severe allergic reaction. But when Lisa came to her senses, she insisted she hadn't eaten anything all day. The model's manager was very concerned and interrogated everyone who'd been around. 
Lisa's stylist said that she had applied Lisa's makeup and indeed hadn't seen her eat anything. The cleaning lady said she had cleaned the dressing room with organic, non-allergenic products. Lisa's main rival, Nora, said that she'd been watching the shooting all day long. She hadn't noticed anything suspicious. Who's the culprit? It was the stylist. Lipstick was the only thing Lisa could have swallowed that day. In the middle of the night, Dennis woke up because of a loud crash. One of the kids must have been out, but they know they aren't allowed to leave at night. The man went to check on the children. All three of them, Catherine, Ruth, and Larry, seemed to be sleeping peacefully. Look at the kids and try to figure out who sneaked out of the house. It was Ruth! There's a dirty sneaker hidden behind the curtain and several pieces of french fries under her bed. Brenda was traveling by train. It was scorching hot in the carriage. The girl took off her gold bracelet decorated with diamonds and put it on the table in front of her. Several minutes later, the train entered a tunnel, and it got pitch dark. When the tunnel was left behind, there was no bracelet on the table. Brenda oh, no. was shocked. Someone's taken my bracelet! There were just three other people in the compartment. Helen said she'd been sleeping. Rachel was reading a book on her phone. And Gregory had gone to the bathroom even before the train entered the tunnel. Who took the bracelet? It was Helen. At first, she had her sleeves rolled up, but now they're covering her arms down to the wrists, hiding the bracelet. Sarah bought some ice cream on Saturday, but kept the flavors in secret. When she woke up on Sunday, all the oh, ice cream no. was gone. She asked everyone in the house if they knew anything about it. James answered he had gone to work early that morning and hadn't seen anything. Mary said she wanted to have the new caramel ice cream in the afternoon. She felt bad she was going to miss it. John didn't even know there was ice cream in the house. But he was looking forward to trying it. Can you figure out who knows something? It's Mary. The ice cream flavors were a secret. She couldn't be sure there was a caramel taste among them. Can you tell who's a real mermaid here? The second one is a guy, so he definitely isn't a mermaid. The girl on the right is chilling in the sun, and she's out of the water. Mermaids wouldn't do that because they dry out in the sun. So the real mermaid must be the one on the left. There were some thefts at the supermarket. There were three cases in total, in January, April, and June. The security camera recorded these videos. The security officer tried to have a closer look and suddenly noticed one detail. After that, the identity of the thief became clear. What did he notice? It was the pregnant woman. The attentive security officer noticed that in January, she looked about six to seven months pregnant. In June, she looked the same. Hmm, seems like it's the mysterious case of the baby bump that was really a canned ham. One day, a thief decided to rob the local bank. He came up with a brilliant plan to dress up as one of the bank tellers and try to sneak into the vault. As he was approaching the vault, he saw a security guard standing right in front of the door. The robber hadn't anticipated this, so he hid and watched the guard carefully when one of the actual bank tellers walked up to the door. The security guard said 12. The worker answered 6 and got in. Then another teller came up to the vault. When the security guard said 6, the person answered 3 and was granted access. The thief nonchalantly walked up to the security guard when the guard said 10. The robber confidently answered 5. He was arrested immediately. So why was the thief's answer wrong and what could he have answered instead? The response has to do with the number of letters in the word. 12 has 6 letters, so the answer is 6.
Six, in turn, has three letters, so the answer is three. Well, you can see by now that the robber should have said three. Looks like he wasn't as brilliant as he thought. Let's start with testing your attention to detail a bit. Take a look at two friends, Ariana and Brooke. Can you tell which one of them is richer? It must be Ariana. Look, she has an original Louis Vuitton purse. Cameron and Dean went fishing on a lake in the middle of winter. Here are photos of them. Cameron is posing with just a little bit of clothing when it's freezing cold, and Dean is posing with a big fish he caught. Which one of them is less smart? It's Dean. Look, the ice on the lake is cracking. It's dangerous to stay there. Everly and Jasmine are in a hurry to get to work. They're running late. Everly is going her usual way, and Jasmine has taken a shortcut. Which one of them is in danger? Jasmine, look, she's walking close to some buildings. There are icicles hanging there. It's very dangerous to walk under them. Noelle and Nash are walking outside. Which one of them is in danger? It's Noel. Even though Nash is blind, he has a stick and he'll know that there is a hole. Noel might not notice this because she's too focused on her phone. For her wedding anniversary, Charlotte received a diamond necklace. Next evening, she was having dinner with her friends and showed the necklace to them. She let them look at it and left for the bathroom. When she returned, the necklace wasn't there. Her oh, friends no. told her that she had taken it with her. Take a look at the pictures before and after and tell where the necklace is. Look at the glass of juice of this woman. Seems like there's more juice in the second picture, but it's not true. She just put the diamond necklace in the glass and the juice level rose. Esme was having a walk in the forest and got lost. She came across a witch's house and asked her to take her home. The witch agreed on one condition. <laughs> there were three cards. Two of them said stay and one of them stated free. They were facing down and Esme didn't know which one was where. If she picked the free one, she would go home. Otherwise, she'd have to stay with the witch. There was a hint. One stay card wasn't in the middle. The second stay card wasn't next to the other one. Which one should Esme pick? If one stay isn't in the middle, it's either on the left or on the right. Otherwise, if the other one can't be next to it, then it's definitely not in the middle, but on the other side. So, Esme should pick the middle card. It must be the free pass. Ava needed to sneak into her mom's computer to delete an email she had accidentally forwarded to her, but the account required a password she didn't know. Uh -oh. Luckily, there was a hint, and here's what it said. What do you think the password is? The second number is the number you get if you multiply the digits the first one consists of. 3 times 5 is 15, 2 times 8 is 16, 4 times 5 is 20. Similarly, 4 times 9 is 36, and 7 times 8 is 56. So, the password must be 3656. Gianna owns a factory producing cars. Three workers can assemble three cars in three days. How many cars can one worker assemble in one day? If three workers assemble three cars in three days, then one worker assembles one car in three days. So, in one day, a worker assembles one-third of a car. Eloise woke up in a dark dungeon with only some torches lighting it up. There was a door, but it was locked. 
there was a panel with buttons of different colors and a plate with the word GROW written on it. How can Eloise get out? The word is the hint, and the letter it consists of are the first letters of the colors of the buttons Eloise has to press, in respective order. Which are green for G, red for R, orange for O, and white for W. Miel likes everything to be in perfect order. Her room is very organized, and even her collection of numbered marbles is sorted into three boxes. In the first box, there are marbles with numbers 1, 2, and 7. In the second box, there are marbles numbered 1, 4, and 5. Two marbles